But right now, big problems for a small borough. Chaotic council meetings caught on camera, and that's just part of it. The NBC10 investigators uncovered the borough runs the risk of bankruptcy. Harry Hairston was there to see it firsthand. Taxing a less We don't have it. I don't care what you is. This is the disorder of Cowan Borough's council meetings. No. Council members elected to do the people's business, resorting to screaming. You cannot take a vote from me. And name calling. And this stupid woman right here. How do you think the public sees you when they see like, that video? Like a bunch of idiots. Definitely. This December 30th, 2014 meeting isn't the only example of council chaos. Shut up, Paula. The NBC 10 investigators found YouTube videos posted by the borough manager showing similar conduct at meetings for at least one year. Voters elected some new council members last year. Power shifted and the fighting started. You don't conduct business. It's a lot of arguments. Um, you don't really get much business done. If you open up the borough code, it doesn't tell you how a meeting should run. Hey, Canetto is the senior director of the Pennsylvania State Association of Boroughs. Canetto couldn't speak specifically about the actions of Cowan's council. His association trains and educates elected officials on the best ways to conduct meetings. When anybody is not showing respect to each other, it, it's not positive for the community. The PSAB recommends following parliamentary procedures, such as Robert's Rule of Order. You know, it should not be a winner-take-all type of uh, event. After the NBC10 investigators started digging deeper, we found the infighting is the least of the 0.3 square mile boroughs problems. This state auditor general's report released last month lists Cowan as severely distressed with $1.4 million in liabilities and a pension underfunded at 47 percent. The state auditor says the pension issues could force the borough into bankruptcy. We're about a little bit over a half a million dollars in debt. Borough manager Paula Brown showed us boxes of financial documents. She says the borough owes the state $81,000 for improperly using liquid fuel funding and $313,000 to the Darby Creek Joint Authority towards sewer needs. For the last eight years, the record keeping here has been atrocious. Some council members target their screaming at Brown. They believe she controls how the majority of council members vote. Sometimes it's just shoved down our throat by our borough manager, um, whether it comes to the table or not. Nobody's perfect, and, you know, she might have overstepped her bounds on a few things. Brown is no stranger to controversy. While mayor of Darby, she made national headlines. In 2004, Brown locked herself into her office, refusing to move to make more room for the police department. Okay, it seems like they want to fight these things. Well, they're jumping out of their seats. That's my voter registration card. I'm, I'm a member. I really do vote. What can we do? I'm asking you because it's, it's out of control. Talking with council members, the drama, the dysfunction, and the debt won't be over anytime soon. You might, might come to the next one when we got the boxing gloves really on, you know what I mean? Some council members and the mayor sent this letter to the attorney general seeking help during the meetings. The AG referred them to the Delaware County District Attorneys. Now, tomorrow on NBC 10 News at 4, we look into allegations of misspending and questionable accounting in Colwyn. Something the Delaware County DA's office tells us they're reviewing. Gary, this is what, what brought you to the meeting in the first place? Well, the first time we went there, remember the officer who resigned and then he was charged with murdering his ex-girlfriend? Mm -hmm. He was a Cowan police officer. And what we were trying to just simply find out, how did he get on the police force in the first place? And what was the background check like? And you went to this meeting. It's not like your cameras were hidden. And this is how they behave in front of our cameras. I got to take you, tell you, it, it took me by surprise. I've never seen anything like this before. And tomorrow, I guess you'll bring us up to date on the bankruptcy situation. Because like you said, fighting is just the small part of it. And we're talking about possible misspending and misappropriation of funds. Right. Harry Hairston, thank you. And do you...
Well, Jim and Renee and folks, we come through dozens of these borough documents, examining checks, spreadsheets, and bank statements. Documents the borough manager says is proof taxpayers' money was misused. Will you put aside council's infighting? And name calling. This stupid woman right here. Is Borough manager Paula Brown says you'll find financial problems. For the last eight years, the record keeping here has been atrocious. And Brown's allegations don't stop there. It appears that money was misappropriated. Brown points to these boxes of financial records as proof. I think the root of all evil is uh, the credit cards slash debit cards. She tells us the borough had nine debit cards attached to 24 bank accounts and some cards in council members' names. They had an expense account. They had a gas account. They had the general fund. Borough bank statements detail expenses, Brown says, had nothing to do with borough business, such as charges at Philadelphia restaurants, out-of-state retail stores, cash withdrawals from gas stations, and even a hair salon. People don't pay their taxes so the elected officials can go out to dinner and treat themselves, or so they can fill their personal cars up with gasoline, or so they can get their hair done in West Philadelphia. You, you don't do that. Brown also says the borough collected cash for services, then dipped into the envelopes for petty cash. When you receive cash in a municipality for anything, that has to be deposited, no matter for what? You don't keep that for petty cash. When you put cash into the envelopes before they were deposited, they would also be used as petty cash? They would be used as petty cash if we didn't get a chance to get to the bank before they needed to be used, yes. Council member and former finance committee chair Martha Van Ockens denies any wrongdoing. She says all envelope transactions had receipts and were entered in a computer. Van Ocken insists the cash was used to buy gas for police cars. And she says withdrawals from gas stations were for police car fill-ups. They would withdraw money, give it to the, put it in an envelope. They would use the money, put in their receipts. And they would throw the money with their borough card, credit with card? With the borough card, because it was for gas. Van Auken tells us she doesn't know anything about a council person spending money during out-of-state trips or at a hair salon. These would not be borough charges. It should not be borough charges, and I don't know where they came from. But the councilwoman does say it was her idea to put another councilwoman's husband on the payroll. I can't give any information on that. It's being investigated right now. According to borough records, councilwoman Tonette Prey's husband was paid thousands of dollars for computer work. Council approved the payments in March of 2012. But records show the borough paid Prey's husband's company for more than a year before the council's vote. I don't believe in nepotism, okay? So therefore, I would never hire anyone in my family to do anything. We reached out to Prey several times. She refused to answer our questions. She's never asked me to explain anything. Van Auken questions why Brown is making these claims. I don't know what Paul is doing. I don't know what Paul's end game is. Brown tells us she's a whistleblower trying to clean up the borough. When you're in a war or a battle, you don't give up. You just keep on going, 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 and we're going until we get to the end and we correct it. And this week on NBC 10 News at 4, we've been telling you about the problems at Colwyn Borough. The infighting and allegations of corruption. Now, new problems have come to light. Harry Hairston and the NBC 10 investigators uncover what some say was a backroom deal to take over the borough. Are you telling me you did not violate the Sunshine Act? I, didn't, I walked into Paul Brown's house. Is that a yes or no, there. Fred? I, I, I'd say, I'd say yeah. But the ends justify the means because we never hurt the borough. So you admit it? I admit I walked over to Paul Brown's house and were three other counties. You violated people. that law. Pat was Pat Pat was out there with a the camera. And you got caught. I got caught. He got caught by another council member. I videotape several members leaving Paula Brown's house. Councilwoman Pat Williams refuses to show us the video, but says she caught council members Paul Muser, Jesse Brundage, 
Masera Kamara, and Fred Lesher on camera going into and leaving the borough manager's home on December 29th, 2014. That's four out of seven total council members. Fred, were your council members getting together at Paula's house on the 29th of December? Paul was having a party. I don't really party. I know I stopped over and dropped a newspaper <laughs> article. I know I'm telling you. Brown acknowledges the get together. She says it was a holiday tradition. She even told us the mayor was invited. But council members Tonette Prey, Martha Van Aken, and Williams were not. The fact that you had a majority of council members or any elected officials meeting at somebody's home, uh, you got a majority, um, that would not be meet the sunshine requirements. Ed Canetto is the senior director of the Pennsylvania Association of Boroughs. He says it's a violation of the state sunshine act for elected officials to conduct government business in private. The act protects the public's right to see its government at work. By law, uh, there are certain times you can get together and certain times you can't. Williams believes decisions were made, including lowering taxes and one targeting her. Was decisions made to vote me out as President Fred? Was it this? Don't be honest. The very next day, December 30th, the four council members called an emergency meeting and removed Williams as president. Give me the whole thing. Newly elected President Paul Muser even had his gavel ready. You cannot take a vote from me. Sit down. You can't say nothing. And he needed it. Council members and the mayor had a chaotic meeting, in part because of the party the night before. And you say, what about that little get-together? Hey, you know, I don't think anybody got hurt. The taxes were lowered the next day, and that's what counted to me. State officials showed up to the latest meeting for the borough of Colwyn. It's their first meeting since the NBC10 investigators aired stories about questionable accounting, possible misuse of funds, and potential secret meetings. Investigator reporter Harry Harrison was there to see if the infighting and if the screaming continued. Now, back the They were at it again. Cowan Borough Council members slinging salty language. Ridiculous. This during what may be the most important meeting for the borough's financial health. $1.1 million in debt. Its own financial consultant says council's behavior is partly to blame. There has been a lacking of solid financial management systems, poor record keeping, and little internal controls. Borough manager Paula Brown says council member Tonette Prey misused borough funds. Records show Prey's husband earned thousands of taxpayers' dollars as a computer consultant without council consent. Any of those true? I have no comment. Prey did address the public, calling for federal intervention. We need the Justice Department in here. Prey believes she and fellow councilwoman Pat Williams have been targeted by Brown and borough police chief Brian Hills with tickets and surveillance. Prey even takes it a step further. If I go missing or I wind up dead, you better look at Paula Brown, Chief Hills. If anybody should be in fear of their life, it should be me. Tonette Prey just created another fantasy in her land of make-believe. All in front of state officials there to help the borough. Have you seen anything like quite like this? I have to honestly say, in the 67 counties that I've traveled, I've never seen anything like this, ever. <laughs> The council did agree unanimously on one thing last night. They have accepted the state's help. Now they plan to have a special meeting to vote on whether to take a loan from the state to pay outstanding bills. For the investigators, Harry Hairston, NBC 10 News.